Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Java API for XML binding, we call that JAXB, to generate Java classes from an XML schema. So what we have right here is a Java application, and in the source I have just an XSD file. This is my schema file. Let's just take a quick look at this. This is in uh, design mode. We can also look at this in source mode. To look at this in design mode, it looks like we have several elements. We have a listing element, a movie element, and movie listings. And then we have declared types as well. Okay, so our goal here is to produce Java classes from this so then we can easily manipulate our objects using Java and then we can marshal it out to XML or go the other direction and take an XML document that adheres to this schema and unmarshal it to Java. So what we're going to do in here is right click on the project, go to properties, and then project facets, and we want to convert this to a faceted form and ensure that Jack's B is selected. So in here it says further configuration is available and we want to make sure that we have a Jack's B implementation, which by default you probably do anyway. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and right click on our schema and we can generate the Jack's B classes. Now we want the classes to go into a particular package, so I'm going to make this package com.fireboxtraining.movies. Okay, and now we're going to hit next. We're not going to worry about proxy information or extensions. We'll just hit finish. Generated classes will overwrite existing files in the project. Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. So, now we have some Java files to work with. Now, what we could do is just look at these individual source files and figure out what's going on, but I find it a little bit difficult to read just because there's a lot of documentation in there. It's actually easier to just uh, click on the package and then we can go to Project and generate the Java docs. Okay, so we're going to go in here and say, yes, let's create those Java docs and then hit Finish. Continue, yes to all. Okay, so now you see this folder called doc. Here's the index.html. I'm simply going to right click on it and we're going to open with the web browser. And here's our nice documentation. All of this was generated for us. Isn't this nice? Okay, so our starting point, if we're going to program with this, our starting point is going to be the object factory and we can just call the constructor and then from here we have different methods. We can create movie listings, we can create a listing and so on. Okay, let's start with movie listings because we know that that's the top level. So I'm going to create a new class. So I'll just say source new class and we'll call this movie test We'll have this belong to com.fireboxtraining. We'll put a main method in there. You'll see it's in a different package from the other stuff. It, it, we could have put it in the same package, doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, since they're in different packages, I want to make sure I import com.fireboxtraining.movies.star and inside of here I'm going to say object factory factory equals new object factory once we have our factory then we can call create movie listings right down here so movie listings I'll call this M listings. Well, you'll see that we have the get method. We have a get listing which returns a list of listing objects and we have a get movie. 
Okay, so what we'd like to do is call the getter to return a reference to the list and then add something to the list. But before that, we have to actually add listing objects. Okay, so we can take our factory, create listing, We'll call this listing1. Okay, listing1 dot, and we have setter methods, set movie title. I'll get real creative here. The movie title. Listing1 dot, set theater. Theater1. I'll create yet another listing. I'll call this listing2. We'll change that up a little bit. So when it's all said and done, let me just fast forward to our end product. Uh, we'll have something that looks like this. Let me fix these little errors in here. Just a moment. Here we have, um, we're using data type factory to create an XML Gregorian calendar object. So I want to make sure that I import that. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We have our movie listings. We're instantiating a listing object, setting some properties, and then we're calling the listing one dot get showtimes. We're adding a data type factory dot new instance dot new XML Gregorian calendar passing in January 2nd, 2002. Doing the same sort of thing, January 3rd, January 4th. So we have three different listing times for that one listing. Okay, so the get show times returns a list of XML Gregorian calendar objects. We have the same sort of thing for listing two. Okay, what else do we have down here? Movie listings dot get listing. We're adding the two listings that we instantiated. Now we're instantiating a movie object, setting the rating and the review and the title. Same thing for movie two. We take our movie listings and we add to that uh, our movies. And then right down here, what we want to do is write all this out to XML. Okay, so I'm going to import my JAXB context as well as my marshaller. So once we create our JAXB context, we have to specify which package our classes belong to. So that's why we passed in com.firebox.training. And here we have our marshaller. This line right here is marshalling it out to the standard out. This right here is actually writing it to an XML file uh, directly under the C drive. Okay, so we can go ahead and run this. Let's uh, clear this off and uh, save everything. I'll right click and I'll just say run as Java application. Okay, now if we get an error, Java XML bind exception, com.firebox.training doesn't contain object factory dot class. Well I know what we did wrong. It's actually com.firebox.training dot movies. Right? Here's our package name right up here. Let's try it again. Okay, so here it wrote out our XML. It also wrote it out to disk. So let's look at this on our operating system. And here's our movies.xml and it looks pretty nice. 
Notice our show times is showing up as space separated items. That's because the schema defines it like that. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.